Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm happy because in the UK this weekend, we all get an extra day holiday because Charles III, our new king, is being crowned. We haven't had a ceremony for a new monarch in the UK for 70 years, which is longer than most grown-ups have been alive. There will be gold and coaches and trumpets and lots of parties and blue, red and white buns. Ooh! And everyone gets one extra day holiday. We thought we'd mark the occasion with a very old story from Greece. One of Aesop's fables about how the birds chose their king. One of the birds in this story is a wren. Do you know what a wren is like? It's one of my favourite birds. They're very small and plump and they've got a cheeky short tail and they spend a lot of time hopping around in the bushes and on the ground and singing rather beautifully. Before we begin, I wonder if you can think of any stories which have kings or queens or princes or princesses in them, while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash Super Great Kids Stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, I'm back. Did you think of any royal stories? Well, there's the King's Ears and Princess Frankie and the Frog and Snake's Sister and Fear Ishka. Oh, and then there's the Seed and the Golden Bowl and Gulbaha. I wonder how many you remembered and you probably thought of others too. Right, are you ready for this story from Greece? Mouth open, bird fly out. One fine day in spring, at the annual meeting of all the birds, one little brown bird raised the idea that it seemed a bit strange that the birds didn't have a king or queen for themselves. It's not really fair, because the humans have a king and everyone is really, really nice to him. They all bow really low whenever they meet him. They ask him if he'd like anything special for dinner. They give him medals and smelly stickers for being good. And he gets to wear a crown and a fur-lined cloak. And he just has a really, really good time. I vote that we get a king or a queen for ourselves. The birds all agreed that it would be a jolly good idea to have a king or queen of the birds. And of course, secretly, every bird wanted to be that king or queen. But how do you think you decide which bird should be in charge? Which bird should be that monarch? So then the birds had a super long discussion about how to choose their king or queen. And eventually, they all agreed that they should have a competition to help decide who should be the king or queen of the birds. But that was not the end of the story. 
Far from it. Because now they had to decide what that competition would be. Now, I wonder what sort of a competition you'd like to have. It all depends, I suppose, on what you're good at. Would you choose a running competition? Or maybe a times table competition? Or a drawing competition? Or a spelling competition? Or a hula hoop competition? Or a skipping competition? And just as you are all good at different things, so the birds are all good at different things too. The nightingale and the blackbird, well, they wanted a singing competition. And the parrots wanted a talking competition because, as you probably know, they can talk the leg off a table. And the kingfisher and the flamingo and the peacock, they wanted it to be a beauty competition because, well, they have colourful feathers and they like strutting about, showing off their plumage. And there was such a bickering and an arguing and a crowing that I'm afraid they'd all be bickering about it still if it wasn't for one wise bird. You've guessed it. Owl. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo, <laughs> said Owl. No, 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 no. Just stop all your hullabaloo and listen to me. The birds went quiet. The competition will be whoever can fly the highest. They will wear the crown and be our king or queen. What? Screeched the chickens, huffing and clucking and scratching the earth. This is ridiculous. As you may know, chickens are not all that good at flying. They wanted it to be about egg-laying or a hunt-the-worm competition. Yes, quack, 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 agreed the ducks. That is quackers. Ducks, as you probably know, have rather heavy bodies and are also not the greatest at flying. But Owl had spoken, and that was that. So all the birds gather together on the start line and on the count of three, hoo, 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 the flight upwards began. And what a flapping of feathers and a whooshing of wings and a honking and a crowing there was. The air was filled with birds of all sizes drifting up into the sky like a giant feathered balloon race. And they went higher and higher and higher. <laughs> Until gradually one bird after another got really, really tired and oomph, they swooped back down to earth. Eventually, just two birds were left in the competition, the golden eagle and the falcon. Now, the golden eagle with his huge wings and bright beady eye and strong curved talons flew up and up and up until he almost reached the tippy-tippy top of the sky. And neck and neck with him was the magnificent peregrine falcon, who was flying so fast at 105 miles an hour that he looked like a space rocket. The falcon tried to put the eagle off, telling him that he was a bit rubbish and his wings were not nearly as elegantly shaped as his. But the eagle ignored the falcon closing his ears to his quips and keeping his eyes on the prize that awaited him if he kept on flying high. Soon, the falcon began to tire and eventually got bored, gave up and headed back down to earth, shooting down even faster than he went up. Whee! So, now there was just one golden eagle flying solo, like an arrow towards the sun. <laughs> Once the eagle was sure he had no more rivals, he ruffled his marvellous feathers, 
sighed a satisfied sigh and turned to head back to Earth to claim his rightful place as king of all the birds. But just then, he spotted a tiny shape dart out from the soft feathers on his back and he heard a teeny tiny flapping above his head. He looked up and there was the wren, the little brown wren, the titchy teeny tiniest of all the birds, about the size of your thumb. That clever little bird had hitched a ride on Eagle's back and now he launched himself flapping his tiny wings with all his might, flying higher and higher and higher. Flippy flappy fly, wee! Flippy flappy fly, wee! Eagle was furious and tried to catch him, but Eagle was too pooped. Meanwhile, all the birds down on the ground watched, puzzled, as they saw this tiny speck of a bird flying just above Eagle. Where had that bird come from, and who should be crowned now? Eagle Angry and tired after all his efforts, swooped down and down and down and down towards the earth at lightning speed. He was not happy. Wren's cheated and that is not fair, said the eagle. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. I'm the strongest and the fastest with my huge wings. I deserve to be the king. Just then, the wren arrived back on earth in a spin. Flippy flappy fly, wee! Flippy flappy fly, wee! Bum, 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 oops! So, who had won? The birds began to argue again. And how they argued. Chirpy chirpy cheep cheep, his honk! Chirpy chirpy cheep cheep, his honk! Some wanted eagle because he was a majestic bird with huge wings and a curved beak and great talons and a steely eye. But the others wanted the cheeky, crafty little brown wren, the plucky outsider. I wonder who you would have wanted to win. Well, as usual, wise old owl stepped in to settle the matter. I declare that Wren will be our king because he used his brains to fly the highest. <laughs> and all the birds cheered. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Three cheers for little Wren, his majesty the king! And Wren threw back his head and sang a sweet golden song of victory. But as for Eagle, well, he was furious and he promised Wren that one day he would get his own back. So, from that day, the little Wren has been king of the birds. And little Wren who, after all, is a very wise bird, spends a good deal of his time hiding in hedges and bushes just in case the eagle is out there flying, waiting and watching with his beady eye to swoop down and gobble him up. And that is where that story ends. Mouth open, story jump back in. Oh, that's a good story, isn't it? Good old Wren. And do you know, the Wren has a beautiful singing voice and she builds a perfectly round nest which has a little hole on the side like a door which some people think looks like a castle. In most European languages, the word for Wren means king or something about a king. So, in French, the word means little king and in German, it means hedge king and in Polish, it means king of the mice and in Dutch, the word Wren means winter king. 
More Ren facts in our subscribers' outlet letter. Now, it's time to dig deep into my bag of happies and say a big thank you to some new outlets for supporting our podcast. <laughs> and hello to Apple Owlets Callie, who is eight, and Liam, who is six, who come from British Columbia in Canada. They are big Super Great Kids Stories fans and listen to a story every night. Liam has sent us a very entertaining picture of the ghost of the bloody finger, complete with chandeliers. And Callie has sent us a picture of Baba Yaga's house with orange chicken feet. Thank you both. And a big happy hoot to Remy, who is six, from Arizona in the US. Remy loved the trickster story, The Crane and the Fish, told by Toop. And he enjoys listening to super great kids' stories when he's travelling. And hello to super fans. James and Atlas from Vancouver in Canada, who are also Owlets and love listening to the podcast. And thanks to those of you who've posted kind reviews on Apple. It puts a skip in our step on a rainy day. Thanks to Greg the Super Duper Great, who was very pleased to hear The Boy Who Lived With Bears, which features some beavers, a favourite animal of Greg's. And thanks, too, to Dean, who would like some stories for teenagers. Dean, some of the super great scary stories are aimed at slightly older children, or you could try listening to our sister podcast, Bust or Trust, which is aimed at eight and above. And thanks to those of you who gave us tips on Kofi. Thanks to Matilda and Tanya in Norway and Seth, from Seattle in Washington in the US, who particularly likes the Indian story, How the Elephant Got Its Trunk. Now, lots of you sent pictures of our stories this week, which we've posted on our Facebook page. So here are some thank yous for a few of them. Seven-year-old Evie in New Zealand has sent us a marvellous picture of Anansi and the hot pepper soup. I love your animals pulling faces as they try the hot pepper soup and shout, too hot! Very entertaining. Pleased to hear that your five-year-old sister, Trixie, can recite my introduction to the podcast. Well done, Trixie. Recommended for ages five to, well, you know the rest. Thanks for sharing your picture, Evie. And eight-year-old Reuben from the West Midlands in the UK is a storyteller in the making, retelling our stories to his family. Go for it, Reuben. That's lovely to hear. Reuben has drawn a wonderful picture of the ghost of the bloody finger with blood dripping from the title of the story. And a ghost floating up the stairs to scare the heebie-jeebies out of the poor man sleeping up there. And six-year-old Ruby, from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland in Australia, has sent us a very imaginative drawing of the Indian story, The Elephant and the Gardener. I particularly like your rainbow patchwork elephant and the way you've drawn him from the viewpoint of someone looking down from above. Very clever, Ruby, thank you. A super picture for a great story. And thank you to super great kids story fan Hank for the lovely story about the hat seller and the polar bear, which you sent us. You are definitely a storyteller, Hank. Keep up the good work. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see these drawings, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do send in your pictures for us to share on Facebook with other story lovers. And if you'd like to send a picture, either attach it to our Facebook Messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. And finally, thank you so much to all of you who came to our show last weekend. Didn't we have fun? If you're interested in watching the film and you're not a subscriber, then go to our website for details of how you can buy and watch it and meet Toop and Kate and me. In the meantime, keep telling your stories and singing your songs. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London. <laughs>